Gary, round 14 on our third win on the trot against Essendon. There were certain moments in the game where it seemed like we were doing all we can to lose it, uh, but in the end, another four points banked, and in the current even climate of the competition, that becomes more important with each passing week. Yeah, it probably seems like that, Sam, but as I said uh, just off air, that I thought our first half was as good as we've played this year. The ball movement was dynamic. We created a lot of opportunities. I think we had 33 inside 50s to their 16 or 17, and I probably thought with how we'd played, we probably should have been another three or four goals in front. And certainly if you then think about defensively, both sides in the second half were probably dominated by the defences. So what was it, 16 goals in the first half and six in the second between the two sides. So for us to find a way to win in the end, albeit under pressure, they had 13 shots. But if you look most of those, they were certainly quite wide and they weren't necessarily in the corridor. And if they were, they were actually a fair way out. And the win was a bit tricky too favouring the school end. So all in all, if you said Coburg at Coburg, win, tick that off. Box Hill at home, tick that off. And now Essendon at Windy Hill, I think it's good for our momentum. And um, the pleasing thing right towards the end was that some of our kids in Mercedes, Hassel and Hobbs all laid some unbelievable tackles, which uh, says that they've got good character and good mindset and they didn't want to lose the game. Yeah, so you touched on it. Uh, there were some great performances from some of the more senior guys on the side, such as uh, Chris Kane, Tom O'Sullivan and Luke Tynan. But I reckon what must be particularly pleasing for you is that the influence of those younger guys on the contest, such as Hobbs, Rivette, Lee, Halsu and even Jake McKenzie, all sort of played their part. And not only that, exposing guys to such a high-pressure game is only going to be beneficial for their development. Yeah, it is. And when you think about how our sort of pre-game has gone in the last couple of weeks with obviously Shannon Lang and Toby Pinwell pulling out just prior to the Box Hill game. We obviously had on the weekend where Aussie just didn't quite come up. So David Yaccarino gets a chance and Scipioni missed because of uh, injury. And then Mitch Golby goes down pretty much just on quarter time. I know they were one down too with their uh, young Ruckman going off in the first five minutes. But you know, that's the way footy is. And of course, course when we think about what we're doing in relation to depth those kids have to come in and step up and in Matt Lee's case he's basically played three games and two of those have been senior 23rd Hobbs has come in and played well enough to stay in as a 22nd player and of course young Housel's done exactly the same so when you look around the ground Dixon was our best forward with three goals and he's basically only 20-21 and of course as you said with Lee Hobbs Housel Rivette and we're obviously asking other guys to step up in Jake McKenzie as well. So I think that hopefully means that when we get everyone up and about, it's going to be pretty difficult for spots. So you certainly want to be playing well enough to keep your spot. And so uh, where be next at home this Sunday? And they're another side who started off really strongly but have since suffered a small slide. But coming off their bye, they're likely to be fresh and hungry. Yeah, and of course they started off really well, but I think they've lost possibly five in a row. But there are obviously injuries at uh, North Melbourne as well, so that always affects a, a full alignment. But we just have to concern ourselves with what we're doing, mate. And of course that's the aim and that's what we always drill into the players. And the more guys that we can have in form and the better football we can play. And of course the opposition have got to work pretty hard when they come down to Northport, obviously. But it's important in the nature of the competition. North Ballarat pushed Willie a fair bit and of course Richmond and Casey yesterday, there really wasn't anything in that result to a degree. So we just have to maintain our focus and it is Werribee, as you said. They beat us here last year in a pretty tight game, so we don't take too kindly to that. But of course, we've got to look at what we now have to do in our planning and preparation and make sure everyone's pretty fresh and healthy for this weekend. And just to finish on that, um, a few of those senior guys currently on the sidelines, such as Toby, Batsy and Aussie, uh, I know it's very, very, very early in the week, but are those players likely to make themselves available for selection at this stage? Yeah, I'd certainly think so. There's, um, they were nothing minor. Yeah, well, sorry, it was minor really. It was just a case of trying to see if we could actually win games with not having to rush those boys back into the side. And that's been another pleasing thing as well. So we could have taken the chance, but it just wasn't really worth it. If it was a final, maybe you would have. But certainly when you're six or seven games from the end of the season, it's more about building momentum. And we'd probably think Billy Hogan should be another one that's uh, obviously in the mix. He didn't play last week. Weekend, just a little bit tight. Young Jared Smith won't be picked in the seniors, but I think he'll be right to play. And uh, Malcolm Newon's now had two games playing uh, at local level, so I think we're certainly starting to get a little bit of what hasn't been around the club in relation to injuries back on board. And uh, as I said, keep pushing that internal pressure. 
Well, Gary, thanks for your time as always. Congratulations on another win and good luck this Sunday. Good on you, Sam.